Hello and welcome. So I've taken the next step and started moving some of my LFO code over to another project which is a soft synth that I'm working on. I've just completed the calculate notes method using the formula that's on the screen on the right hand side. It calculates 120 different notes which is 10 octaves and it's calibrated to 440 hertz, the musical standard. And the thing about this code is it's flexible. You could put 432 hertz in as the reference frequency instead of the 440 hertz, and it'll generate all of the notes correctly. But there is one caveat: it has to be equal temperaments. But later on, I'll support loading Scala files or .tun or .tune files, which will allow for more exotic tunings and microtones. Anyway, over time I've been using Inkscape to create scalable assets for different plugins that I intend to make. Transferable assets like controls, so knobs, sliders, toggle switches, and dials. You know, things like that. And so I'm just going to use some of them for now. But the beauty of using Inkscape for these assets is that they can be resized to any size, and they won't pixelate. It's just the nature of vector artwork which is why I chose to use it. This way I can use the same assets for, for example, 4K resolution screens, and I wouldn't have to redraw everything. So essentially it's future proof. If for example we go up to 8K resolution screens, then I can just upscale all the assets, no problem. Anyway, here is the design, or at least it was, but I'll get to that. The idea behind this synth is to give every voice two oscillators, two filters, and various modulation capabilities such as LFOs and multi-segment envelopes. And rather than having everything scattered all around, I want everything to be really clear and concise. And I wanted to support modular capabilities too, but rather than having wires draping all around from like oscillator 1 to filter 1 and LFOs and you know you can imagine a right spaghetti junction of all different wires. Well, with a mod matrix, you can just put pins into a grid to connect things together, which lends itself to the concise nature of what I'm trying to create, which is a ambient slash atmospheric synth primarily. But yeah, it'll be capable of anything really, bass lines, leads, anything. So I say this was the design. Well, the MSEG sections, they really need to be ADSR envelopes, I think, after consideration. You know, so like, attack, decay, sustain, release. Or, de-ADSR envelopes, so a delay stage first, before the attack phase. In any case, there needs to be a way that you can control the oscillators and the filters. For example, if you press a key on your keyboard, you want the sound to start coming out, but you also want to be able to control you know, whether it comes in slowly or whether it's plucky sounding, so instant attack. And also when you release the key, you want to be able to control whether the sound stops straight away or whether it sustains for longer. And you also want to be able to do this for the filters as well, because you might want them to open up slowly, for example, as you're holding a key and then close slowly after you release the key. And then what I'll probably do is have a second page for more advanced MSEG envelopes and effects. But that's a future endeavour. One step at a time. Anyway, this is why I don't like fleshing out my graphical user interfaces straight away. Because if I'd have gone to the trouble of fleshing everything out 100% perfect from the beginning, then right now I'd be a bit screwed, because I'd have to start changing it. So, it's functionality first and foremost, and then tart it up later on. Anyway, the LFO code became the oscillator code, so osc.h and osc.cpp, and then we have the GUI code that's separate. For example, GUI oscillator.h and .cpp. But yeah, I mean, conceptually, an oscillator and an LFO are the same thing. It's just a LFO runs a lot slower, so it's not really usually audible. Apart from when it affects, for example, a filter or something like that. 
but you're not directly hearing the output of the LFO in that case, you're hearing what it's controlling. Because LFOs are usually running so slow they're out of the range of human hearing. But I was going to do some code to make it so that I could play my keyboard and then sound would come out of the synth, but then I realised that it needed envelopes. And so, here I am. Just about to start making the envelopes. Yeah. The envelopes are completely missed out my design. You see how we're going to merge the envelopes into the oscillators and the filter sections, but I decided against that. Just felt like it were going to be a bit all over the place again. I thought it'd be better to have dedicated sections for the envelopes. But yeah, as you can see, it's just bare bones code. There's nothing actually happening here, it's just skeleton code. Empty blocks and such. But. Once these envelopes are done, they can be transferred over to the LFO generator plugin, and you know, each project starts to feed into the other. So let's have a look at what I've got so far. I've decided to attack this in stages, just doing the top row of the design. So, one oscillator, the oscilloscope, which isn't working at the moment, it's just sort of... Well, it's drawn the triangle wave, which is what's going to be coming out of this synth when you hear it, but... I haven't actually hooked up the code properly yet, so it's sort of drawn a bit of it, then died. <laughs> so just ignore that. And the filter section as well, but that's not ready yet. Basically, I'm creating each module of the synthesizer separately, starting with the digitally controlled oscillator, the DCO. Because that's the heart of the synth, the sound source. Without it, there's nothing. And then once I've got that completed I'll move on to the filter and then once that's completed and the oscilloscope is hooked up then I'll just duplicate these three modules for the next row and then I'm going to rework the oscilloscope snazz it up a bit because I want to add some nice blurring effects and things to it but it's as I say functionality first snazzy mctartaroonie doing his second if you catch my drift so what I'm about to demonstrate is the start of it all the octave and frequency knob which is working with the notes that got generated, as I explained at the start of the video, and then the volume control. And since the built-in oscilloscope isn't working at the minute, I'm using an external one for testing and debugging and stuff like that. Although there are no bugs at the minute. So, as you can see, it's a triangle wave playing a C4. And then we can turn it down and turn it up and we can cycle through the different octaves of C yeah running in debug mode so there might be a few little crackles and things and then with the frequency control we can transpose the oscillator to different notes in steps See when the octave's down there, it's pretty much an LFO. So at the moment it's just one voice, because obviously I can't play the keys yet to trigger more voices. But once the envelope code is in there, I can start hooking it up to play different notes and stuff when I press keys and stop playing notes when I release keys. See, I could hook it up to play different notes right now, but they'd never stop playing. They'd just constantly keep going. I mean, at the minute, I'm just working on these three modules, so there isn't actually even an envelope section yet, but I'll just make a really basic envelope, you know, for testing and that. Anyway, this has just been a short, basic introduction to what I'm trying to create, and how I'm going about it, and just a demonstration of that note calculation code in action, to prove that it works. But there's still a long way to go, so until next time, as always, thank you for watching.